These are some of the biggest video editing mistakes that new YouTubers make. And the truth is you can avoid them pretty simply if you just know what to do. And so today we're here with Nate and he is our Think Media video editor. He's been editing for us over the past year, over 150 videos for Think Media. That's and so welcome to the channel. I'm excited to pick your brain uh, about video editing. And I'm also a video editor. It's kind of my background as well. And so I think there's gonna be a lot that people can get from this, but welcome. Yeah, it's great to be in front of the camera this time and kind of get to connect. And I love sharing, you know, what I know about editing. So I think we should just dive right into it. Awesome. So the first uh, mistake that a lot of people make in editing is in their intros. So share with me maybe some of the things that you see people are making and how they can fix these mistakes. Yeah, I think really it just comes down to you know, once you earn the viewer's click, you really just want to deliver and just kind of affirm why they're watching it. So that even distills down into editing, you know, much mm -hmm. more about planning, but also in the editing stage, cut right to it, cut right to the point. So I, I like to, you know, cut right into the content as soon as possible, but what can you lead, what can you tease up? So when it comes to like, let's take a YouTube video, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of more scripted. You have an idea of what you want the hook to be. Mm -hmm. You might say, what is the best camera for YouTube in 2024? So I'm gonna make sure that I'm showing visuals of those cameras. Yes. Rather than just being just a talking head of you, show something that you're actually going to deliver on the audience. So definitely having lots of visuals helps. And to add to that yeah. too, I think we've seen a lot of people in our community, some have cooking channels. Yeah. And it's like, they will say, they'll say the right things in the video, which is, you know, today I'm going to show you, you know, how to cook sour or how to make sourdough bread. And, and I, and I'll, you know, watch their videos and they're not showing the visual, the, the, what we call B roll mm -hmm. of the actual process. So show that final product, which is, they're going to see at the very end, show that at the very beginning. And that will let the viewer know like, okay, that looks really tasty. That looks really good. Or showing the camera, like that looks really cool. And, and that just kind of lets the viewer know that you're going to deliver on that promise. Or a big brain move. Sometimes you can just show the process and maybe you mm. hold off on the final result. And so until they get to the end, do they see mm. what that reaction of that sourdough bread was when you eat it? So there's little tricks mm. you can do subconsciously to kind of keep people engaged and watching. But yeah, definitely having good visuals to supplement why they clicked on it is huge. I really like that like teasing aspect, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of people miss out on, especially because you want to do that early on in the video. Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of people when they start on YouTube, they might just press record and then they'll be like, hey guys, welcome to my channel. And uh, what you can do is edit all that out. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you've already shot the video, edit all that out. But uh, I think the visuals and the teasing actually what's coming up and holding that off is super, super smart. And real quick, I just want to say like, you know, there's so much you can do with editing. So maybe you felt pretty poor about how you filmed the video. But if you take some time to really edit it, you can take a video that maybe you didn't feel too good about and make it a great video. I'd also say I always tell people to spend more time editing their intro yes, than yeah. the rest of the video. Because if you go into the YouTube studio analytics, you'll see that the biggest drop off you'll typically see in mm. your videos is in those first 10 seconds. So we really like to spice it up, maybe a little bit of extra text, like subtitles, because even on YouTube now on your phone, when you hover over the thumbnail, it automatically starts mm -hmm. playing. And as an editor, you should think about what visuals am I gonna show? Can I put text on the screen so they can see what's happening? Yeah. And having that in mind is is very smart, but that doesn't mean that the rest of the video, there's no editing and yeah, it's exactly. terrible, yeah. right? That's not what we're saying here. But if you can, I think just spend a little bit of extra time 100 there. 100% agree. It can assist you just, you know, throughout the whole video. Think about the video that Omar and I did that you edited mm. where, you know, we were talking about YouTube in 2024. And uh, you took that maybe 35 minute long kind of podcast format and you took the best moments, right? right? And you really created a very engaging hook is what we call it, the, the opening of the video. Whereas a lot of people, they don't spend that extra time and effort to do that. They might just start the video right at the very beginning. And we've tried this before and we've seen that, you know, if your content's good, if it's engaging, mm -hmm. like it still works, but you'll get better results by spending that extra time and effort. Practically speaking, mm -hmm. how can an editor, what should they look for? What types of things are they looking for? If they have a video podcast or a long talking head video, they want to try doing that coming up yeah, style yeah, yeah. in the beginning. Like, 
are you just looking for the most interesting, engaging, or like w- controversial? Like, yeah. what kind of th- what kind of things do you look for? So in- you are trying to look for like the best clips that mm-hmm. are going to be is going to intrigue the viewer. And actually, the very interesting tip I've learned from other editors mm-hmm. is they'll just listen to the podcast in the background. And if anything kind of perks up your ear mm-hmm. when someone says something, maybe it's the way they said it or just a very intriguing thought, and you're kind of reengaged. You should take note of that specific point. So for an example of one of those is, is vlogging dead. It was a very controversial statement sure. and it was just very, I, I love You wanna to, hear the answer. You wanna hear the right. answer and it's very just like, a very controversial, abrupt mm-hmm. way to just begin the video. And so you are looking for something, I just look for very strong statements mm-hmm. and you know, questions too work really well. So if yeah. there's a question, you're gonna tease the answer of what that could be. But oftentimes there's just like a a certain like musical quality of how you might mm-hmm. say something is just said very confidently sure. that you are gonna use in that hook. So once you kind of go through and you've found like a bunch of different yeah. clips that all sound pretty good, you can begin to have to vet those ideas. Yeah. And it's like a puzzle. You have to see how they fit together. And that's the tricky part because you yeah. might have some good stuff, but you got to cut it out because it won't fit with that hook. You are telling a mini story of what mm. the hook is going to be. So like, for instance, is vlogging dead? And then Omar says, it's absolutely not dead. But then he goes into another tangent about shorts and whatnot. Mm. It's kind of extending on that same idea without mm. going without revealing too much of the answer. right? So then we kind of just take you on, it's like storytelling, really. It's like what the viewer's expectations are, the different changes that might happen throughout the video. So really taking time to build out that, just even just the clips, building mm-hmm. out what those statements are, as your A-roll cut can take, it can take a long time. Yeah. Once you go from there, it's about having fun and adding B-roll to supplement those yeah. visuals, hide some of those cuts. I think a big thing too is like you'll have a good statement, but it's too long. Mm-hmm. How do you make that shorter? That's mm-hmm. really tricky. You have to really sit down and think about that. But that's kind of the fun too is like what mm-hmm. bits make it, yeah. you know, what is the core essence of what you're saying? And this is just another big thing with editing is just like you'll be talking about a YouTube thing and you might be explaining a certain concept. I might have to go in and kind of cut out what is the most clear way of saying this thing. Mm-hmm. And that will just provide clarity to the viewer. You know, sometimes we might, you know, ramble on for too long and, you know, we're all guilty of this. So being able to go in and kind of choose what is the most clear points mm-hmm. is going to better register to the viewer and they can actually retain and understand what you said. Yes. I, I love that. And that's a very hard thing to do. It like yeah. sounds easy, but it's actually very hard to do. And I think that's something that editors probably just over time get better and better at. But mistake number two is not cutting enough out mm. or just uploading your first draft. Right. So when I got started on YouTube, I would edit a video and just upload it straight to YouTube. That's what you do. You just, you know, you take out all the mistakes, take out all the pauses and that's your video. Mm-hmm. And what I learned when I started to learn YouTube and how to edit for YouTube and what performed better for the platform was not always should everything that was said when filming make it to the final, um, to the final output of the video. And I remember when you first came on and we kind of gave you authority and we're like, Nate, if you feel like something should be out of this video, think about the viewer, think about the retention of this video. And what are some things that you look for that should be taken out in a video? And what I recommend is like, when you edit your first draft, watch it again, right? As the viewer, but what should you be looking for that maybe should be cut out? Cause oftentimes mm-hmm. people are leaving stuff in there that, that shouldn't be in there. Right. I think a very practical way to look at this is if you have a first cut of your video, you need fresh eyes. So either mm-hmm. take a break from it, maybe come back a day later or five minutes later and watch it again. And another way you can do this is by getting a new perspective. So have your friends or your brother or your sister Mm. watch your video. And something really weird happens when you have another viewer watching it, you become much more critical of what's being said. You feel the pressure. So you realize, oh man, this thing is just way too long. So really, if you can get feedback from people, even like I've sent you videos and you critique them, like, nah, this wasn't really that clear or whatnot. It's just a great way to kind of expedite what should be in the video. 
that that's really good. And I know that I've shown my video to people before and I'm watching it and I'm like, and I'm like telling them, I'm like, let me just skip forward a little bit. Like just watch this part because I, I'm like, I you want should probably cut that stuff out. Exactly. Then, yeah. And so it, that's like such a life hack, mm-hmm. because, you know, just kind of feeling that like, I want to skip forward because like this wasn't boring for me when I was editing it, but I'm mm. like, I can tell it's boring for them and I can feel that. And so those are, uh, you know, maybe if you're a more entertainment channel, but on a practical level, if you're information or educational, mm. uh, watching that with fresh eyes, you start to realize like, you know what? I already made my point. I don't need this extra story that I added yeah. for tip number four or whatever it is. Another thing that that a lot of people do is they just don't provide enough visuals Mm. and YouTube is such a visual platform. It's video, right? So you have audio, but you also have video. So how much more engaging, you know, can it be for someone to look at you? Mm -hmm. But if you can somehow use visuals uh, in editing or in your video somehow to make the point more clear, Mm -hmm. it's going to, it's going to help to your advantage. and It's going to make it a lot easier to watch, which is I think part of the editing job. And maybe talk about the video on what you did for how to niche down on YouTube. I think you added really good visuals and we'll show that on the screen here. Yeah. I am a very visual person by, you know, my personality. So you are explaining a topic and I can't see it. It's really hard for me to understand it. Mm -hmm. So me being the first viewer of the video, I want for you to understand it as well. So I want to provide visuals. When you were breaking down how to pick a niche, you use um, an example of Mm -hmm. profit, proficiency, and passion. Mm -hmm. And so I have to think about, okay, what is a good way to visually represent this? And, you know, a Venn diagram, because we had some overlap, was probably the best way to go about that. And at a very basic level, I could have just showed the Venn diagram as a still image. And, you know, that's better than nothing for sure. But I wanted to go a layer beyond that and add a little bit of like color to the different bubbles. Mm. So passion was represented by like purple. Proficiency was represented by blue. There's just another way to kind of engage the audience Mm -hmm. and better clearly understand the principles that are are there. And it could be as simple too for people. Um, you know, obviously you could like create a diagram, create a graph that was so necessary for that video mm-hmm. and for that edit, but maybe it's as simple as adding in some B roll. You can use story blocks. You could even add in just text. So like yeah. if you're going through, you know, are these nine mistakes, we're going to have text on screen because it makes yeah. it easier for the viewer to follow along. And that that's kind of like, that's the goal. You want to make it easy for them to follow yeah. along, adding in visuals, Uh, really helps that a lot. And maybe you're not like super technical or like maybe your editing skills are not super there yet. Mm -hmm. One we could do that is just, you know, get B-roll of you drawing on a piece of paper. You know, can you do something like another practical way to show and represent that? So drawing, um, whatever it may be, whatever your skill set is, try to use that to kind of better explain what your point is. Yeah. If you don't do that, you know, it's oftentimes, you know, if it's just a role and you're talking and there's no visuals, it can be kind of confusing. And that's mm. the next mistake is that usually when people just get started, their videos can be hard to follow along, yeah. a bit confusing. How do you fix that in an edit besides, you know, besides the visual element, how can you take things out or, you know, mm. what are you looking for to try and make it easier to follow along? Yeah. The last thing you want to do is confuse your viewer. You really just want to make sure it's clear and that they're, they are understanding it. Yeah. And I, you know, I think about the viewer and I want to respect their time. Mm-hmm. So they clicked on their video and they're giving you the most valuable asset, which is their time and attention. So I want to make sure that, you know, I'm respecting that. So if there's anything maybe that was poorly explained mm-hmm. and, you are yourself as an editor, like questioning, what does that mean? A lot of times I'm just getting a video and I'm learning that topic <laughs> for the first time. Yeah. So it is a little bit weird to kind of go in and like, okay, what is these, what does he mean by this? Mm. And try to understand that and like, okay, well, how do I then represent mm. that? It's really knowing that the essence of what you're saying is probably a good part of my job as an editor and I think that's another thing. I don't think AI is there to kind of yeah. solve that. There, yeah. there has to be a mind behind the editor. So as far as like more practical things of like what to remove, mm-hmm. is there anything that wasn't clearly articulated? And sometimes just by the tone of your voice, maybe you're not confident in what you said. A lot of times I've kind of cut things out from you that you maybe yeah. you, you said and you weren't sure about. I would go in and like, well, I know what he's trying to say. Mm-hmm. Let's just cut out some of that fluff. And even it, Cutting out ums and buts and filler words can go a huge way to make sure that 
you are being conveyed as smart and intelligent. That's a huge thing. So even as simple as like cutting out filler words yeah. just makes you your presence feel a lot more authentic. Yeah, that's really good. So another tip here, even to make it more clear to follow Mm -hmm. can be the pacing, which is our next mistake, is that it's too slow. Things don't follow along very well. And I, I think a big thing that you can do is you can utilize music, and we'll talk about music more in depth, but there's certain editing elements you can do to really work on your pacing. And I think mm-hmm. some of the tips we're already talking about, if you just do those, if you show them to a friend, if you show your video to a friend, if you start to cut out and make it more visual, that can help with the pacing. But like, I think people undervalue the importance of pacing yeah. because that's really what we're talking about here. When you're talking about cutting things out and making it more simple, it's all for the pacing. Mm-hmm. And so when there's slow pacing in a video, people are going to skip through or they're going to want to jump ahead or maybe click off your video. Those are bad, bad signals yeah, yeah, yeah. for the YouTube algorithm. And so it comes back to pacing. Mm-hmm. And I know you're a filmmaker at heart. And so like pacing even goes to like storytelling. Are there certain storytelling elements that we can do to make something kind of flow better Mm -hmm. and and be more natural and have a good pacing? So I think I want to break this down between like a beginner and a professional maybe that is involving more storytelling. But on a very, very basic level, let's say you're an education type YouTube channel. One great way just even formatting your videos is I have 10 tips to share with you, right? So if you have 10 tips, and each point is about a minute long, but tip number seven is five minutes long, Mm -hmm. that is just kind of a weird way to break up the video. And so you might find that you should really take point number seven Mm -hmm. and you know maybe only convey about one minute. So each point is about Mm -hmm. one minute long. And I think that's another thing for pacing too, is just like, what is enough? Mm -hmm. You know, Sean always talks about be brief, be bright, be fun Mm -hmm. and be done. So you wanna, have you want to kind of lie on being concise and being brief, especially mm-hmm. with education? You don't want to go too in the rabbit hole because then you'll just overwhelm, consume your viewer, right? So I think you know, in a more practical sense, if you can go from like mm-hmm. point one, point two, point three, a great way to kind of re-engage the viewer is instead of just laying music underneath your entire video, that's one track that's just very repetitious. Spice up the music. Use 10 different tracks, about a minute long each. Mm -hmm. So for each point, there's a new music track. That brings a new energy to your video. That's something I do on Think Media a lot is you bring up point number one, and I have one track for that. And I try to find and match the right mood to that point. And then by the time we transition, it feels like you're you're moving on. You're respecting the viewer. Yeah. I love that. And I, I, I really appreciate even uh, when I watch YouTube videos and it feels like I'm starting something new, it actually makes it easier to follow along. I'm like, okay, I, I've like, I've accomplished that. And it's almost like in a sense of a, of an accomplishment from mm-hmm. understanding this and moving on to the next part of the video. And so I think that's a really cool trick you can add. So tell me what it looks like more on a professional side of storytelling. Okay. So I think if you are really, you know, diving into edits and maybe you are creating a hook, mm-hmm. pacing for a story is you know, you can have fun with it. You know, you can use con- you can use pacing as a storytelling tool. So maybe your hook, maybe it starts out maybe a little bit slower, mm. but then it ramps back up, but then it slows down again. So Diary of the mm. CEO will use that, ver- that variation of pacing as a storytelling measure. So rather than your video being one monotonous tone, can you vary yeah. it, you know? It's nice to have some contrast. As humans, we love to have that in storytelling. You don't go from leaving the Shire all the way to reaching the end. There's all these ups and downs in the journey along the way. The highs aren't high unless you kind of feel those lows. And, yeah, you know, very it, true. It's not as snappy when you don't kind of feel it drawn out. And so, and there's certain moments where maybe it's a little more emotional, a little more serious where you might have a slow zoom in mm-hmm. and it's, and it's one cut for, you know, eight, 10 seconds. And then it goes, the music kicks on like, and it's like, yeah. you know, and then it cuts back to fast pace and that, you know, gives you more of an energy feeling yeah. of an excitement. And so there's, there's a very different specific, emotions Yeah. There. There's a very specific example from one of your videos. You're telling about your story of YouTube mm. and the certain highs you felt during your YouTube channel and the mm. career, your YouTube channel was taking off. So I hit it with some fast paced yeah. music, fast cuts, yeah. you know, I'm showing... I'm showing exaggerated B-roll of you like you on stage, you with <laughs> glitter flying down, the view count is going up, yeah. but then you hit uh, like a deep hit and it cuts to black mm. and it fades up. And you, you talk about 
the de- kind of the depression you felt when mm-hmm. you start you stopped getting views. And so having that variety just you make it a lot more engaging and it's more fun to do that. So, yeah. you know, even on an educational video like that, you can use storytelling. Yeah. I love that. Those are very powerful tips and um, that all play a role into the pacing. And that I really think holds viewers longer and, and creates a better video just in general. So tell me a little bit about harsh cuts, which is yeah. uh, something I think a lot of people do. And then how do you fix that? Yeah. So I think on a very, very basic level, if you're you know cutting your A-roll and maybe you had to fix a mistake, you know, rather than like showing a jump cut, can you hide that cut? Can, can you explain you, what a jump cut is in case someone's watching yeah, this? They never good. even heard yeah. that. So a jump cut is simply if you take one clip and let's say you flubbed up your line in the middle. Mm-hmm. So you cut here and then you cut out that segment. Yep. Well, now you're left with this sudden jump in your edit if you're it's okay. a talking head, if you haven't changed the angle at all. Okay. So a very simple way to fix that is to, you know, use some stock footage or maybe cut away to or co- cover that cut to cover that cut. So it feels like it's one continuous fluid thought rather than having that cut. You could also crop in a little bit yeah. as well and match that eye line. So it goes from uh, cutting from the wide angle and it looks like it just tightens in a little bit. Explain what a J cut and an L cut is. Cause that's another really good tool to yeah. really smooth out harsh, you know, harsh cuts. So, a J cut basically allows you to play the the audio coming from the next clip before you cut to the visual. Mm -hmm. And an L cut is the same but opposite. So Mm -hmm. you leave the audio from the first clip going into the second one. And that's why it's called a J and L because it looks like that on the timeline. So that's another way like Let's say you do you did have a jump cut by taking the audio and just slightly shifting it over. Now and it fading feels, it out. Yeah, and fading it out. It now feels a little bit more fluid, and it yeah. just again, it's another way to make it feel more smooth. Totally. I think it, it's nothing worse than having a harsh cut where maybe you you slightly cut off right before you're about to say something. It just feels harsh. It feels cheap. It feels like you're not taking the time to make sure it feels polished. That's what we're really looking for is in a YouTube video to make it feel like it's been well-crafted. Using those types of cuts really helps smooth out the audio. Mm. And audio is a very important part of the video process. You know, it's 50% of the experience. Mm. You know, it's not just people watching a video, but they're actually listening to it as well. And so that's a mistake that people make. And a lot of times it can't be fixed in editing. Mm -hmm. However, you know, there's like podcast enhance, Uh, which allows you to basically, you know, kind of revamp that audio up and hopefully save it in certain, you know, circumstances. It can work really well. But uh, there's certain things like EQing. How should, you know, how much should people actually, you know, work in the edit on the audio? How important, how important is that? I think audio is something that's often neglected, probably because it's not visual and we can't really see it, but it makes so much of an impact on your final video. George Lucas said that the movie going experience is 50% audio. Hmm. So I think we should really respect having good audio. So what does that look like? You know, when you're in production, hopefully you have good audio like this. Sure. So it really goes a long way. So having those principles in pr- production, but as an editor, there's some things you can do to, you know, enhance that. So whether it's just like your microphone, maybe it's a little muffled, you can learn some simple EQ techniques to kind of improve that. So that's a very simple tactical way of going about it. But you know, what are some other ways you can enhance the soundscape of your video? You have your one layer of audio, which is, you know, your narration, your voiceover. Mm -hmm. You can have music. You can have some like ambient sounds or you can have some sound effects. Mm. All those things are different tools for your video. So when we create a hook, you know, music is definitely playing a role. The the voiceover is definitely a role, but also sound effects is just another way to add to those layers. So all of that- People often don't make them too loud too. It, very true, and very so true. so you gotta be careful there because you really you really wanna make sure that the sound effects aren't like, you know, they'll they'll put one in there and they'll just leave it at zero dB. And Ooh, it's, like, yeah. it's like, whoa. And so you really wanna bring those down and listen to it. Yeah. And so any advice there on just like, where should the music volume mm-hmm. and sound effect volume lay? If you are education, like we are, I would definitely err on having the music quieter than you think. So, you know, I would say like in in Resolve, basically my music is set to negative 36 or 39, so it's really low down there. And that's because I want you to pay attention to the video, but the music is kind of help guiding you. It's it's helping with pacing and whatnot, but you don't want it to be a distraction. You don't want to 
have to conflict with the yeah. information needed. Now, there's certain moments in the hook where the hook music is a little bit louder because mm -hmm. we want to hear that, we want to feel energized yeah, by that definitely. music. But definitely, you know, don't have that compete with the, you know, your voice. You definitely want to make sure you're clear in that regard. For like entertainment and filmmaking wise, you know, maybe you are doing something a little bit more in depth. Mm -hmm. You want to play around with those and whatnot. Or let's say you have a music break and the music can rise and, yeah. you know, it falls off. So you, from a very technical standpoint, if you're doing education, definitely err on the side of, having a quiet so that we can really hear you. And that leads us to number eight, which is music. And mm. there's a few more things here and tips that I really want to dive into. But at Think Media, we use Epidemic Sound and uh, we love using them. They have a really great uh, library of music that you can use on your YouTube videos, still monetize. And then you also have a huge sound effects library. And one of the things that I like is when you find music, you, know, you can sort it by mood, you can sort it by genre. Then you find a cool song, you can just hit find similar songs and then you can just just like kind of find what works for your channel. And uh, there's a lot of different just type of music in there to fit the emotion. So if you guys want to check out this special offer that Epidemic Sound gave us for you guys, then just check the link down in the description or go to thinkmediasounds.com. Now, people make a lot of mistakes with their music. And mm. I think a big one is choosing the wrong music. You know, some people just like, you can just tell like this doesn't fit the vibe. You know, and so one of the things I really like to feel is I think about the emotion that the music, because music gives you emotion. Yes. And when you're watching a YouTube video, what, there is an emotion to that. And so trying to find the right thing there, what are you looking for when you're picking out your music and how to enhance the actual video? Mm -hmm. And at what points of the video is music necessary, not necessary? Like, should people use music the whole time? What are, what yeah. are some mistakes or tips here? I really think you should be thinking about your viewer, your audience, and kind of what their tastes would be for, mm -hmm. and what's kind of expected of that genre. So for an educational thing, it'd be very, you know, misguided if we had hard rap during our videos, <laughs> you know, because um, you want to set the expectation of, you know, what your genre is. So if it's educational, you don't want anything too distracting, right? So I like to look for maybe something that's a little bit more simple, maybe a little bit more positive, but mm -hmm. also something that's simplistic, minimal in the background. And yeah. it's not competing with the, the vocals because I think what you're conveying is the most important part. When it comes to like, you know, entertainment, you can definitely have a lot more fun with that and finding the right tone. Yeah. But yeah, find like what, what does the audience, you know, what, what do you think they would appreciate now? I often consider myself the first viewer of a you know think media video, so there is a little bit of my own tastes in the videos. So, for instance, the last um, podcast edit we did, the hook, I went for something a little bit more airy, a little bit more cinematic at the beginning, instead of a certain tone. But I didn't want to linger there. I also wanted to mm -hmm. spice it up, so I transitioned into a, a faster paced track right after we cut to black. So there is some like having some variety, but it is kind of what is the tone of it and the emotion. I, I yeah. totally agree with you. It's all about like kind of the music will provide the emotion for the video. So what your video is about is yeah. going to play so much into that. And I think if you have an educational, informational type of YouTube channel, you don't need music the entire time. I right. highly re recommend music uh, at the beginning of the video if you're gonna do some sort of like coming up type of thing or really have like a, a edited hook that is gonna be a bit more engaging, highly recommend that. But another thing you can do to just kind of keep viewers engaged is throughout the video, if you start to do something funny, or you know, you can add in some like goofy type of music just for that short little mm. segment. If you do, if you like start getting uh, motivational or upset, you can add in that. Or if you're like sharing a sad story, you know, and maybe it's a little bit funny, you can add mm. in like some violin music. So there's things you can do there just at different parts of the video that could be funny. You could use it to actually just increase that emotion of the story you're telling. And so there's different ways. It's kind of case by case on how you want to do that. But I think utilizing music and sound effects yeah. throughout the video at different points when they fit can really help a lot. Just keep the viewer engaged. Yeah, it's making the point more clear of what you're trying to say. So mm -hmm. if there is something humorous about, you know, a joke, you know, having music or slow mm -hmm. zoom in might kind of help amplify, yeah. make it even more funny. So that's a great way to make your message even more powerful. Now you mentioned this a little bit earlier about being that first viewer mm -hmm. of the video and you were telling me that people, you know, they don't do this, this is a mistake. And so expand on that a little bit more and how, uh, what kind of mindset 
you know, should a video editor be in when they take on a project? Yeah, this was something like hugely comforting to me as you guys, you know, from the very first time I edited your videos, you guys were like, Nate, I want you to have responsibility. I want you to own the edit. And that really kind of, you know, cemented with me because I think that's so important. You know, if you're mm -hmm. afraid to take risks and, you know, try something or you're afraid, oh, maybe no one won't like this, then it just hinders the creativity of the video mm -hmm. and makes it less fun. And so I think owning the edit, what that really means is like, if you find something that could be funny mm -hmm. and you wanna make that more humorous or you have an idea, there's some element of trying that and having fun with it that you should definitely at least follow up on because chances are, if there is something funny to you, then it's gonna be funny to other people. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a huge thing is like, rather than thinking about an audience and kind of a vague picture, like yeah. I think that's good to do, definitely. I, I always have like a viewer of what a think media person sure. is, but there's so much of me in the edits too, yeah. that I'm like, this is my taste, you know, I'm gonna try this. I think a funny example is when you were um, reviewing the road podcaster duo and you were talking about how the microphone made it sound like you're in a grocery store. I could have left yeah. that kind of there, but I thought taking your personality and amplifying it and actually place you in a grocery store, <laughs> it's just a fun way to make yeah. the video. It's just more fun, you know? Yeah. Fun for me, fun for you, fun for the viewer. And I think they appreciate those little things, taking the extra time yeah. for those. Yeah, and I think if you are editing your own videos or if you're editing videos for someone else, like feel free to take risks, try new things. Yeah. You know, you're gonna get inspired watching other YouTubers or TV and movies and it's like, take those curiosities, take those ideas, implement them into your video. And if it doesn't like, if you watch it back and you're like, it wasn't as funny. I've done this a lot where I've edited. Mm. I'm like, I think this is going to be funny. I go way over the top and I'm like face tracking and all that stuff. And then I watch it back. I'm like, that was too much. And it's not that funny. I, I'm like, I can just delete it. I can go back, you know, mm. command Z. <laughs> a lot of times, like, I feel like I go like for the road podcast, I felt like I was going too far, but yeah. then you watch it back as like, well, it actually, it fits yeah. is oddly enough. But I, that's something I really want to convey to a, a viewer. Cause I, when I first got started, I was being very careful and I didn't want to, you know, push the envelope too much. So I just want to give you permission, especially if you're editing your own videos. Yeah, go for it. Have, take some risks, go for it. But also if you're editing for someone, have that conversation. I think really if you, and maybe you're hiring editors, you want to lend that ownership yeah. to them because they're going to deliver a better product ultimately. A hundred percent. Like you don't know truly what my preference would be on a certain, you know, idea that you have because like, and am I going to sit down and talk to you, have a zoom meeting about that particular yeah. idea? Most likely not. We got to push out videos. So it's like, I kind of had to take those assumptions yeah. and run with it. Yeah. I love that. Now for the final mistake, this one might be the biggest one. Mm. And I think is editors, you know, start to grow over time. And I think just the evolution of YouTube and where it's at, I think people make the mistake of editing too much. Yes. Just like too many effects. Mm. The cuts are way too fast. They've trimmed now too much down. The pacing. And I've made that mistake myself. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And I think, you know, it, it's hard because it depends on what type of videos you're yes, making. Yeah. But I just like, I do think there is uh, a need on YouTube for even slower edits at time and for letting them breathe and a bit more storytelling. Whereas we see a lot of people just like, you actually. If you want to succeed on YouTube and you're editing your videos, you don't need crazy effects. You don't need subtitles for every word. You don't need music, you know, going throughout the entire video and cropping in and out every single time. You'd be surprised if you just mm -hmm. sat down and talked to a viewer of your channel or watched how they watch. It's like, why are they watching your video? I think editors need to ask themselves that question is why is someone watching this video? Mm -hmm. For us, I think media oftentimes, as much as we love the storytelling and the editing and, and those types of videos, I love that too. Like this video right here, it, it's not crazy edited, right? And mm -hmm. we're talking about editing. Yeah. Uh, because people just want to hear our feedback, our experiences, you know, editing over the years for YouTube. And so I think what will help most YouTube editors out there is just asking themselves and understanding the viewer and asking why are they yeah. watching this video? Absolutely. I think over editing can often scream insecurity in your video. So if you begin a video with something you know is going to be good, oftentimes, yeah, you can ease up on the editing because you know the value is so good. You don't want to kind of, you know, flashbang your viewers with different, you know, graphics. I, I kind of do a little bit of that at the beginning just to really hook the viewer, but I don't, I try not to go too crazy because I think ultimately 
you know, people are there for information and they're there, you know, hearing from you. So if you can find that balance where you're not going crazy overboard, yeah. you're again, respecting the viewer and knowing, hey, you have attention span more than five seconds. Sure. You, you can, you're an adult, you can learn from this video. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it's, you know, finding that balance is definitely key. Now, if you are a video editor out there and you're looking to save time, Nate and I have been using some AI tools that have saved us hundreds of mm. hours of video editing. And so we share our favorite tools with you guys. If you click on the screen, you can check that out. We'll see you in the next video.